Hello, my, my name, name is Kat. My, my name is Kavina. And my name is Mackenzie. And welcome to the Cat Potato Lab! The show where we bring science into your own homes. Now, now folks, folks uh, today we have a great episode for you. If you'd like to download the lab manual, you can do so at bit.ly backslash couch potato lab there at the bottom of your screen, and you can get your materials ready. You can also text into the show today at 306-570-1013, the number at the bottom of your screen. And you can also reach out to us on social media at Eyes Youth on all platforms and using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab. And in today's episode specifically, we're going to be talking about different ecosystems. And with that, we would love to know your ideas about how we can take care of the Earth. And so if you wanted to start texting in your ideas, reaching out to us. Um, now, let's meet the scientists with me today. To my left, who do we have? Hi, Kat. Hi, everyone. My name is Kavina. My pronouns are she, her. And you want to know a fun fact about me? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, a fun fact about me is I love to skateboard. And this month, I've made it a goal to learn how to do a kickflip, which is when you're on a skateboard and you can jump and your board, board spins and does a full rotation and then you land back on it. So maybe if I learn this skill um, in the month, then maybe I'll bring a skateboard and show you guys how I do it. Yeah, wow. please keep us updated on that. Yes, you yep. might be you might be the next Tony Hawk here. I hope so. A scientist that's a Tony Hawk scientist? Yeah. Whoa. Good. Cool. Scientist. Super cool. And as I said, my name is Kat. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is today I just learned that dirt and soil are not the same. So I learned that nope. dirt is actually not living and plants don't grow very well in it. And soil actually has living factors. And so plants grow better in it. Super That's cool. right, Kat. Yeah, and who do we have here to my right? All right, so my name is Mackenzie. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me, on Monday, I shared that I broke my donut record, my donut eating record in one sitting, <laughs> and I decided to test it again last night, <gasps> and I beat it again. Whoa. What, what was, what what was your it? record your on Monday? What was the record on Monday first? Uh, the record on Monday was three. Three in one three. sitting. Three. three in one sitting. Yeah. What? Three three donuts. Like donuts. Like that's yeah. a donut. Like Easy full size donuts. Wow. What yeah. you, what's your new record? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. You yep. beat your record by twenty four donuts. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Round of applause. Kenzie. Wow. That's nice round of applause. That's very impressive. <laughs> yes. So before we begin, I just want to take a moment to recognize that our live stream and Eyes as an organization is operating on Treaty 4 land, which is home of the Nahewak, Nakaway, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, as well as the homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. So we recognize that our viewers come from diverse areas, so we invite you to take a moment and recognize where you're situated today and where you're going to be sharing um, and learning this knowledge with us. Now, I have something else to tell you. Before we started filming, we had a gigantic baking showdown. That's but right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We we can't decide a winner. So we're going to describe what we made, maybe taste it, and then we want to hear from you to see who won. So why I don't, don't we know start? Who, won. who should we start with, Kat? I think we are going to start with Kavina. Kavina, tell yes. us about your cookie. I am very confident this is a winning recipe. Last Wednesday, I texted my friend and I said, hey, I need your famous cookie recipe. And she didn't really know what I was talking about, so she sent me um, a link for an online recipe. And here it is. Ta-da. Wow. They smell amazing. Uh. <sighs> okay, now, can I, should I take a bite now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. here's my winning recipe. Oh. Um, Ooh. What? Um, uh, maybe yeah. it tastes good. I don't know what what happened, but maybe it tastes good. I'll try a bite. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I don't know. Trust well, me, it tastes great. The but good I news for me and Kat is I don't think that's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, and I, I I'm don't glad know that happened. I don't have to put that soggy cookie in my mouth. So <sighs> I'm really disappointed in my friend. <laughs> this isn't the right recipe. All right, well, Thanks. we know what Kavina's cookie looks like. If you want to maybe give us your input on that, w let's see what Mackenzie's cookie is like. So I'm very proud of my cookie because I came up with this recipe all on my own. That's I, impossible. Nope, I did it. I just added a little of this, a little of that, and 
it came out like a cookie. And uh, mine doesn't fall apart, so I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of mine. Good close up. Mm, what do you how's think? That, how's that taste, Mackenzie? I think it's good, but I think I might have lost a tooth. It's kind of hard. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. See, now my soggy cookie doesn't seem so bad. Hmm? I guess. Well, I guess we're saving the best for last because I know my cookie recipe is a real winner. And you know why? Because this recipe has been perfected over generations of my family. My mom, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great 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 grandmother, this recipe has started all the way back then. So I trust that over time, this recipe is perfect. Now I'll take a bite and we'll see. All right, let's see how your grandmothers have done. Mm. I didn't hear a tooth break and it's in one piece. Oh man. Wow. Kat, what's, what's it like? This, this is the best cookie I've ever tasted in my entire life. <laughs> really? Ever, yes. Oh, wow. What happened to your apron? <laughs> oh, my apron is <laughs> down. And you know Your why? My mother would be <laughs> disappointed. It's because this baking competition is over because I have won. I'm saying it. I'm ah. for sure that this recipe is the best. Come on, really? Wow. Kay, well, so why, why do you think your recipe was so good? So I think because I'm done with this. We worked on this recipe for a really, really long time. And it's been changed over time. I'm sure that when the recipe started out, it probably wasn't that good. But over time, we've changed it and adapted the recipe to be what it is, this magnificent cookie today. And so adaptation is the process of cha changing something over time to better suit its environment or situation. And adaptation is also the result of natural selection. So this means that we want something to adapt to be able to survive in an ecosystem's climate conditions, um, against predators, and against other species that are also competing for the same food and space. And evolution is any process that takes place over generations and generations of time. And we actually did an episode, it was episode 13, called Polar Bear Jacket, where we talked a lot about different plant animal adaptations. And we had a very special guest that episode, Vanessa, who g talked about natural selection. But I said a great word in there, ecosystem. Mackenzie, can you tell us more about ecosystems? You bet I can. So ecology is a branch of biology. So biology deals with a bunch of living things, but ecology specifically looks at the relationships of organisms, so living things, with each other, but also with their surroundings. So if you imagine you and your friend at the beach, it's not just you and your friend that we're interested in, we're interested in everything. So that sand, the beach, the water, everything around you. That's what ecologists, who are scientists who study ecology, are looking for. Now, an ecosystem is a specific community that has both abiotic and biotic factors that work together to show how the community thrives and survives together. So we're going to talk about those factors a little bit more, but for now we're going to look at this graphic of an ecosystem. So as you can see in this graphic, there's a yeah. lot of different things going on. Yeah. There's some no. animals, some water, some plants, and all of it together as a community is that ecosystem. Hmm. Now, Kavina, I mentioned abiotic and biotic factors. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Can you explain that to us, please? For sure. Okay, so abiotic factors, oh, I'm just gonna reel in my whiteboard here. Abiotic factors are the non-living things that, that affect the ecosystem and that affect the environment. And so they are such things as sunlight, wind, whether it's cold out or hot out, so temperature, um, water, and what kinds of water is in that ecosystem, altitude, so whether you're on the very tip top of a mountain or if you're kind of near sea level, and then there's also a lot of other factors that go along with that. So notice how these are all non-living things. This sun does look alive with sunglasses on, but <laughs> these are all non-living things that affect an ecosystem, okay? okay. All right, got now that. Now there's also biotic factors. Watch out. Okay, and as you can see, um, I have taken two art classes in my lifetime. <laughs> um, biotic factors are the living things that affect an ecosystem, 
and they, the living things interact with each other and they also interact with the abiotic factors. So we have three different types of biotic factors in an ecosystem. First one is the producers and they are able to use sunlight to grow. So that's like our plants and our flowers. We also have consumers such as cows, birds, frogs, insects. These consumers eat producers and they can also eat each other. Kind of oh. creepy, but that's like how nature works. Like a wolf could eat a mouse and they're both consumers, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So we have producers, consumers, and then we also have decomposers. And um, these are such things as worms, fungi, bacteria, and we're going to figure out a little more um, in this episode what the decomposers do. But these are our biotic factors. All right, so if we look back at that graphic that we just looked at, we're gonna put that ecosystem back up on the board. And we'll be able to now, knowing about biotic and abiotic, we'll be able to do it. So as you can see, we knew before that there was a lot of biotic factors, you know, those plants and animals, but knowing what abiotic factors are, we can see the sunlight, the water, all of that great stuff. It kind of looks like it's a nice hot day out. Mm -hmm. So those are all abiotic factors that are also contributing to that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Okay. And with this new knowledge about abiotic and biotic factors, it is now time for our science showdown. Showdown? Ooh. What? Ooh. Oh, All no. right. So we are going to be testing out our knowledge of, can you pick out an abiotic factor versus a biotic factor? Now, okay. Kavina, I would like yep. you to pull out the flaming hot seat for our first contestant, Mackenzie. Deal. Ooh. I see, I'm such an expert on these things. I am oh, not yeah. even nervous. Oh, I'll wait. How's that, cat? Perfect. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm so confident. I'm definitely going to win this. All right. All right, so bring it on. Mackenzie will only get 20 seconds to answer these fire, super rapid fire questions. Okay, are you, are you ready, Mackenzie? I'm so ready. Yep, here we go. Okay, and I will put the timer up here so that we can hear. Okay. Here we go. All right, we have 10 second countdown. Okay, here we go. Seven, six, five. I'm keeping track four, of scores. Three, two. Are you alive? Yes. Am I alive? Yes. Is a robot alive? No. Is a robotic robot biotic? Come no. On. Have you ever eaten worm? No. Are worms biotic? Yes. Is the temperature of a worm a biotic factor? No. Is it an abiotic factor? Yes. It's windy out. Is windy no. alive? No. Okay, <laughs> I did pretty good. I'm very proud of how I did. You know, I think there's more questions to that, Kat. Should we just finish them up? Yes, we'll finish. You have, we'll do them super quick again. Like Ready? a bonus round? Okay, I bonus got it. Round. Bonus round. Got Ready? It. Yep. Okay, so it's windy out. Is wind alive? No. Have you ever eaten wind? No. You're having a picnic on a windy day. What plant do you sit on? Grass. Is grass biotic? Yes. Do you eat your picnic sandwiches hot or cold? Cold. Is coldness a biotic or abiotic factor? Abiotic. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Proud of applause okay. for Mackenzie. Good job. All right. That was pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that. Okay. So before the timer went off, I counted you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Ooh. All right. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think I can get eight. Let's see. see. I'll keep track of points this time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Good luck. I'm nervous. Okay. Are you ready for these rapid fire questions? Definitely. All right, timer. We have a seven, six, five, five four. four. Is grass biotic? Yes. Is turf biotic? No. Is turf that looks like grass biotic? No. Is a ba banana biotic? Yes. Is a banana still biotic once you eat it? N no. Is it nice outside today? Yeah. Is the sunshine alive? No. Is the wind alive? No. no. Are you alive? Yeah. Is soil biotic? Yes. Is dirt biotic? No. Is Mackenzie going to win this competition? No! <gasps> oh, oh, time's up! All right, well, you did very good. It's time to look at the points before the timer <laughs> went off. No bonus round for Kavina. No, uh uh. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. 12. Yes. Wow. Yes. Congratulations to Ooh. Kavina. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Air high fives to Air you. Air high fives. There, there you, you go. Host. Great job. All right.
I think I think I really understand the difference between abiotic and biotic factors in our ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Now, just a reminder that if you would like to text us in, you can do that at 306-570-1013. And you can also reach out to us on our social media at Eyes Youth on all platforms at the bottom of your screen and using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab online as well. Can I just point out one thing? Um, Mackenzie, you said you've never eaten wind? Yep, Was I'm that pretty a correct confident. answer. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think so. It's not like I I don't like eat wind. I might like I don't know, I eat the air, I guess. I don't know. Do <laughs> okay. you think I've ate wind? Uh, yeah, if you're walking into a windstorm. Okay. So, have you okay. eaten wind, Kavina? Yeah, all the time. Every day. I mean, especially here in Saskatchewan, it's you know, the wind's gusting like 70 plus kilometers an hour every other day, it feels like. So we've yeah. been getting lots of windy meals lately. It's great, it's great snack. Yeah. Okay, okay. Stop <laughs> rubbing it in. You won. Fair and square. We get it. Oh, okay, moving yeah. on. I do not want to talk about it any longer. So we've talked a lot about ecosystems. So I think it's time that we build our own. What do you think? So yeah. let's look at this graphic on the screen about what we're going to build today. And maybe we'll get a better visual. So we're going okay. to be making an eco column and this eco column has three different chambers. So we're going to build it chamber by chamber. And when we put it all together, we're going to have our very own mini ecosystem. Wow. So Sweet. let's start at the bottom. So we're going to grab our materials out. So I'm going to get my right. materials ready here. So we are going to start with one bottle. Now, Kat, what do we do with this bottle to start? So the first thing that you're going to want to do is take this bottle and you're going to make a line around the bottle and ask your parents or guardians to help you cut the top part of this bottle off. And you can see Mackenzie's is all cut and ready to go. Yes. So mine, I have cut it and ready to go. We're going to start with our aquatic chamber. So I'm actually going to go ahead and label mine too. So I never forget what it is. Ah, good idea. So I'm going to go ahead here and write aquatic chamber. Then I'll never forget what I'm working on. So there we have it. So there's a couple different things that we want to put in our chamber and they all serve a purpose. So we're going to start with some rocks. So if you think about like at the bottom of a lake or maybe even like the ocean, there's some rocks down there. It's like a really solid bed. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some rocks and Kavina's going to do the same over there. Of course. So she'll just follow along. It's a little loud. Sorry. All right. So I have some rocks in there. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever touched the bottom of a lake or an ocean, but there's lots of sand down there lots of times. So I'm actually going to add some sand in there too. Now you want about double as much sand as you have rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. That should be about good. There we have it. Now this morning, whew, it's dusty in here. <laughs> <laughs> Now this morning I went out and I collected some pond water from the pond at my house. And when I picked it, I grabbed a, a bucket of it. I said, there's nothing, it doesn't seem like there's anything living in here. But once I got it into this pitcher, I started looking at it closer and there's actually some swimming things in here. Yeah. Um, it wow. looks like there's some like bugs or larvae in there. So I'm really excited to see what happens over the next few days with this. But if you don't have pond water, no need to worry. It's going to work just as good with some tap water. So you can go ahead and add your tap water as well. Mm -hmm. Now we want to add in our water on top of that sand. And you're going to want to leave probably about, I would say, inch or two at the top. We don't want to have it too, too full. And it's just so that when we put our next bottle in, we're going to want to make sure that the top is submerged. So I'm going to add a little bit more. The just sand kind of soaks up some of the water too. Yes, that's so right. So pour it in, let it sit, and then uh, you can add some more once it goes down. Yes. Hmm. Now while we're letting that settle, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about this aquatic part of our ecosystem. Let's hear it. Now, a lot of times in aquatic systems, we need to do everything we can to keep them healthy and um, protected. And lots of times what happens in lake water and in oceans is there's something called contaminants. Contaminants are things that we don't want in our water because it hurts the things that are living in it. 
So um, in Saskatchewan, we have a lot of, um, it's called eutrophication. So what happens in eutrophication is lots of times we use fertilizers to make our plants grow or maybe our crops grow better and faster. So we put this fertilizer on and that's great, but sometimes what happens is once the um, water runs through our crop, some of that extra fertilizer gets into our water and then it spreads in our water. And basically the same way it helps our plants grow in the land, it also helps something called algae grow in our water. And that's not great for the water because it takes up oxygen to live and it takes it away from the fish that are living in there. And it also creates a layer on top so we can't see. So we actually have a graphic of some lakes here so we can see what I'm talking about here. And it's gonna look very green and that we can't see through it so it stops the light from going through. So um, I'm gonna, I actually have some fertilizer here that we can show too. This is some fertilizer. So this is what you would put in the plants. And Mackenzie, you know what I've heard? Oh, oh there's, there's the green lake. So Mackenzie, you're saying that that green stuff on top is algae and it's not good? Yeah, so algae is actually in lots of lakes just naturally, but once we add in that extra fertilizer, eutrophication happens and it just grows really, really fast and a lot. So then it uh, takes away the oxygen from the fish. And it also, you can see how it creates that layer on top. It stops the sunlight from getting into the water. <gasps> and yeah, uh, pop quiz question, Kavina. Is LJ abiotic or biotic? That is biotic, Kat. That is That's right. Awesome. Because it is a living thing. There's even LJ in these con in our aquatic chamber here right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate what I mean by this contamination. So we're going to pretend that the water in this container is like a lake, OK? And then we're going to use this food coloring, and we're going to pretend that this food coloring is a contaminant or, let's say, a bunch of fertilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some of this in one spot of my water. So I'm just going to drop it in there. There goes the fertilizer. And I'll drop in a, lot, a bit more. So this is all of that runoff, you can see. And I'm not even stirring this. I'm just standing here. And you can see that it is mixing around. It is starting to take up my entire body of water. And that is because there is something called diffusion happening. And that's because there's a particles in this water moving all around that are causing it to mix. So it's mixing around and causing the entire body of water to be affected, even though that contaminant was only dropped at the top. Now, a lot of our lakes are connected in Saskatchewan and around the world. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we have one contaminated body of water. Now, let's say this is another body of water and maybe a river connects the two. So this contaminant, this contaminated water, maybe it flows into this one. And what happens? <gasps> now they're both no. contaminated, right? That's right, they are. Wow. They're both blue, they're both contaminated. and. Something that a lot of ecologists live for, they say, they say dilution is not the solution. So that means that mixing it with more water doesn't help anything. It just affects more water. So that's why we need to try really hard to make sure that we're not putting things in our lakes that don't belong there and that we're protecting that ecosystem as much as we can. Great. That's cool. You know yes. what I've heard, Mackenzie, is um, one fifth of all of the chemical fertilizer that's being put into crops and gardens, one-fifth of that runs into the lakes. One-fifth is, that's almost a quarter, which is half of a half, which, which is quite a bit. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah. So it's really important that we're mindful of that. Mm -hmm. Great. So now we have our aquatic chamber, our first chamber in our eco column set up. Now, Kavina, oh. can you get a set up for the next layer? Yes, and this layer, in my opinion, and in many scientists' opinions, is the most important layer. This is the decomposition layer, okay? And that is our middle layer. In this decomposition layer, we are basically creating a compost. Have you guys heard of a compost? Yeah. Folks at I home, have you heard of a compost? Hopefully, maybe you have a compost sitting um, in, on your kitchen counter. Composts basically take um, dead things, things like, uh, I got some over here, eggshells, banana peels, or um, dead plants or dead insects, and all of that gets break, broken down into nutrients for living things. So this eggshell can get broken down into calcium and carbon, and then um, plants and things in the um, aquatic chamber can actually take that up and use it to grow. 
So <laughs> do you know, um, Kat, Mackenzie, do you know how the decomposition layer, do you know how it can break those things down? Well, Let's earlier when we were talking about the biotic factors, you said that there was um, biotic factors called decomposers. So what happens is those worms, fungi, things like that, they're actually at work and they eat those things and they break them down for us. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ken. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, well, I'll just bring this board back. There's three different kinds of decomposers. We have earthworms. We have bacteria and we have fungi, like mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And all three of these things can break down dead things like this and turn it into nutrients for plants and aquatic life. So let's create our decomposition layer now. We have our bottle. What we need to do is cut the top off the bottle, uh, sorry, the bottom off the bottle. Mm -hmm. Kat, do you want to show the folks at home? Yes. So as you can see, if you take your pop bottle, you're going to draw a line towards the bottom of the bottle and once again ask your parents or guardians to help cut this section off so that when we're using it in our eco column this part will be missing so you can see that Kavina's is cut nicely already yep cool. bottom is gone okay so make sure the lid is still on and what you'll need to do is cut holes around that lid there now we used um, a screw where is my screw or like a nail and we poked holes with that around there. So ask a parent or guardian to help you out to poke holes um, because that, that will help the water get up into the decomposition layer. And it'll also help nutrients soak down from the layer into the aquatic chamber. So you got your holes, got your top cut off. The first thing we're gonna add is a bit of gravel, okay? So throw that in the bottom. Now Kev, I Gravel's think we have, we have one more little slot that we cut out should we cut that yeah. out before or after? That's a good idea. We should probably cut it out before. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we cut out a little window here. And that way we can continue adding in our uh, materials so we can keep this compost going forever and ever. Yeah. So All cut right. that out. Now we got our gravel in there, like so. And that gravel helps filter the water that comes through the, the layer. So it filters it out so nice clean water goes into the aquatic chamber. We have our gravel, now let's add our soil. And if you remember at the beginning of the episode, Kat said that soil, she found out, is living. And the reason we say it's living is because of these things, the earthworms, the bacteria, the fungi, they're all living inside of here. And that's why we're going to add it into our decomposition layer. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna toss that in. Awesome, and Whoa, while, they're it gets messy. Oh, while they're adding that soil, we have a great question here. Uh, what is fertilizer made out of? <laughs> ah, so a lot of times one of the um, really popular um, nutrients um, that's in uh, fertilizer is nitrogen. So a lot of times um, they're really nitrogen heavy. They have a lot of nitrogen in them. And it's basically just different nutrients that help um, the plant. So it's basically like a vitamin for plants. So some of us might take like multivitamins or something in the morning. It's basically like giving um, a vitamin. Um, so the nitrogen would be like a vitamin for the plants. Mm -hmm. So there's chemical fertilizers, like Ken showed that bucket of fertilizer. This compost is basically creating a more natural fertilizer for plants. So things like the banana peels and the dead plants have nitrogen in them. When we put it in our decomposition layer, it actually gets broken down and then given to the plant. So this is a much um, healthier way to, what, well, maybe healthier way? This is a much more natural fertilizer that you can use to help your plants grow. You can also take um, compost and put it into your gardens at home or in your grass and it'll help your um, plants grow as well. Okay, we got our soil. Mm -hmm. Now let's add some of our compost materials. I got a banana peel. I had a banana this morning. I'm going to rip this up, toss it in. I got eggshells. Kens, what do you have? I have um, some grass clippings. I just cut my grass last night, so I just took them off the lawn. And I even have some uh, dead roots here. They, I pulled a tree out of the ground the other day, and there were some <laughs> roots. No. Uh, yeah, a I have a whole tree. A yeah, whole tree I was working be? out and I got a little excited and <laughs> I accidentally pulled the whole tree out of the ground. You know, it happens, right? <laughs> it's okay. So all this material has a lot of carbon and nitrogen and magnesium and calcium that will uh, help the plants grow. All right, so I'm going to put some of that on top These here. Eggshells. Ooh, Whoa. that's a good sound. I got my eggshells. I got some leaves as well. And the leaves actually help 
um, this layer um, to prevent it from evaporating and drying up as well. So I'm going to throw leaves in to help with that. All right. Oh, we have another great question here. Are animals that eat dead things like vultures decomposers too? That eat dead things? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I guess in a sense, but if you think about a vulture, they're eating that to use to build up their own muscles, right? So they're eating things and then they're using all of that energy and the carbon to build their own muscles and build their own wings. Whereas decomposers eat things and then leave that nutrients to help um, the plants grow. Mm -hmm. Do you remember so what animals are called that eat other dead things? <laughs> Do you remember what those animals are called? Consumers? Not quite. Oh, you're talking about carnivores. No, that eat dead things. That eat dead things? Yeah. Do you remember? Kat, you seem stoked you, about this. You seem very confident. I want to hear the answer from you. So uh, a vulture would actually be an example of a scavenger. Ah, Do you remember? Yes. It is. <laughs> so scavengers like to prey on um, dead things. You might see, for example, you see crows at the side of the road picking at uh, dead roadkill. So vultures would be an example of that. Yeah. I like to think of uh, decomposers as kind of like recyclers. They're taking something and they're decomposing it so that we can use it again. Whereas like an animal just eats it. They're kind of selfish. They just have it for themselves and they're done with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Right now we're just taking a popsicle stick and mixing this up. So that way all the decomposers in the soil have a chance to interact with all of that organic matter, which is like the banana peels and stuff. All right. Stir it up a little bit. Got mine all mixed up. This is looking good. Okay, decomposition layer is done. So now what do I do with it? I have it here. Oh, let's put it on top. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. So you're going to take the decomposition layer now and set it into your aquatic layer. Now the water should be able to rise up to this, um, where the holes are. Yeah. So, so yeah. if it's not touching, if that bottom isn't quite submerged, you can just add a little bit more water. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to add some tape around mm -hmm. um, my, my column here, just so it's nice and sturdy and doesn't accidentally fall over. So I chose Good clear call. tape just because then I can see into it. But if you have any type of tape, that's going to work just fine. And folks, just a reminder, if you would like to text into the show at 306-570-1013 or reach out to us on social media at Eyes Youth on all platforms or using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab and let us know uh, if you have any questions or let's see what your eco columns are looking like now. Mm -hmm. All right, Mackenzie. Now, I believe there's one final layer to our eco column. That's right. So we're going to move on to our terrestrial layer. So this layer, it kind of, um, we're using it to represent all of like the plant and animal life in an ecosystem. So we're going to um, plant our very own plant. So this one, we're going to just fill up with a lot of soil. So the same soil that you used in the decomp layer, you can just use it again. So I'm going to go ahead and find my soil. And I'm going to fill it right up. So um, I should have mentioned this before. I think I forgot that step. I got ahead of myself. I was so excited. <laughs> You're going to need to cut this bottle um, just like we did for this middle layer. So um, we're going to cut off the bottom again and put those holes in it. So uh, Kat has her bottle there. So you can do it the exact same way as we did last time. Draw that line across, cut now, it. Mackenzie, will this one need a window as well, like the last layer? That is a great question. This one doesn't need a window. Now, while we're at it, Kev, why did we put this window here? We put that window there so we can keep adding things to our compost because eventually this layer is going to actually um, get more and more dense and then basically used up. So we can keep adding to it to keep the system alive. Ah, so when I have my banana tomorrow morning, I can put some of that toss, peel in there? Yeah, toss it right in there. And it's actually really good to add, um, to add your food waste into a compost instead of uh, putting it in the garbage. Because the food waste that goes to the landfill actually produces a lot more methane and CO2, which are greenhouse gases. I'm sure you've heard of that term before. And so when you have them in a compost instead, there is very little CO2 and methane being produced. All okay. right. Yeah. So um, I hope you've been able to get the bottom of your bottle uh, cut out for you. And then also we're going to do the same thing we did last time with those holes here. So you can use a screw, a nail, anything like that. I encourage you to ask a parent or guardian to help. 
um, that'll be very helpful and make it a little bit easier for you. So we have our bottle. We're again going to flip it upside down and leave that cap on there. And we're going to fill it with soil. So let's dump our soil in there. Oh, I love getting messy. It's my favorite part of science. <laughs> and just so while uh, we're adding that soil layer, we have a wonderful question here from the Hayes brothers. And they are wondering, what is in a mushroom that can make it dangerous? Ooh. Do one I, of our I scientists got this one. know? Yeah. Kavina? So, yeah, there are very dangerous mus mushrooms. There's some that, of course, we could eat. Um, one of the da most dangerous mushrooms in the world is called the death cap mushroom. <gasps> Oh, yeah. I've heard of that before. Do not take a bite of one of those. Um, and the reason they're so dangerous is because they have toxins in them. So in this death cap mushroom, they have toxins called amatoxins. And those wha are what can make you really sick because they can interact with your immune system, your nervous system. Uh, not your immune system, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's your nervous system that they can interact with. Um, and then you can get very sick. So the reason these mushrooms, they they've adapted over time to produce these toxins to protect themselves so animals learn to not eat them wow, wow. Mm -hmm. all right I so love that. now that we're adding that soil layer Mackenzie what is next well first I'm actually hoping that Kavina will share some of her soil with me because I ran a little bit short oh of course so I'm, I'm hoping that she'll toss that over to me I have quite the mess over here I'm just gonna lay that on its side all for right. now <laughs> Um, I'm going to seal this up and toss it over. Are you ready? I, I'm so ready. Never I was been more a ready quarterback. in my life. I was a quarterback once. Good thing I was a receiver. In high <laughs> ready? Hot, hot, hot. Yep. Hot. Oh! Woo! Touchdown! Touchdown, that's right. <laughs> All right. So I got this soil here. I'm just going to pour the rest in there. Um, you want to fill it pretty much to the top. Um, we're going to plant a plant in here, so you want a little bit of room for that. But I want to make sure that I have enough soil in here as well. Look at that the perfect amount. Nice. All right, so caring. we have our soil and as Kat was saying before it's important that this is soil not dirt and I know that's a little bit confusing but lucky for you we have an episode coming up on that so you can uh, stay tuned for that. Nice. Um, but we're going to plant our plant in soil and hopefully it thrives. So I have a lovely plant here so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do my best to plant this plant within this soil. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a very messy part. Very neat. You might want, uh, you know, like a sibling or maybe a parent guardian, someone to help you. <laughs> this it's is hard. gonna get messy. It's hard to hold it and plant it, but I know I can do it. Nice. All right. Nice work. Look, Look at this. Oh. I'm opting for something a little different in okay. my um, ecosystem. Sure. I have some seeds, some, well, some beans. I'm gonna try to plant a bean plant in my ecosystem. So wow. I have some seeds that I will be planting here. And I do have a little plant. I think I'm going to do two things. This is grass and then some beans. So put some. Let's try them both out. Why not? Beans in there. We love experimenting. Yeah, see what works. Cool. Kay. Got those in. And oh. Oh. All right. Look at, oh, look look at, at this. Wonderful plants. These look so, so good. I can't wait for it to all be done. can't say I'm, I plant a lot of things, but hmm, I would never know. That's You're looking pretty pro. good. Ooh. Okay. So we have everything in our terrestrial layer that we need um, for our mini ecosystem. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place this right on top again. Cool. And you'll notice here there's a little bit of air from our decomp layer. That's actually really important. There's like some oxygen in there in the air that um, our, our uh, decomposers need to live. And um, that's going to help get the nutrients up to our plant soil as well. Mm -hmm. And like we did with the uh, bottom layer as well, I'm going to go ahead and tape that a bunch so that it doesn't fall over. And so it's nice and sturdy. So once you get that on top, feel free to... Um, put some tape on it and keep it nice and sturdy. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Just make sure that your terrestrial layer is uh, touching the decomposition layer. Okay? Mm -hmm. They need to be interacting because the plant needs to get this, these essential nutrients by, um, through diffusion. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Wow. All right. Ooh, this tape is tricky. So okay, yeah. Oh yeah. we got all three layers now. We have an aquatic chamber, we have a decomposition chamber, and we have a terrestrial chamber. Wow. Yeah, so ours looks exactly like that diagram. 
That's well, very good. I must say that these are some exceptional eco <laughs> I would never expect anything less from the amazing scientists here in this studio. Exactly. Thank you, Mackenzie. Hey, what can I say? I'm pretty good at complimenting myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> Except for winning at abiotic versus biotic. I told you before, we're not bringing that up anymore. <laughs> all right, all now right. Now, before we put <laughs> these um, away to let them grow, um, can we maybe you should water this. The soil's looking a little dry. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're going to water it from the top. And this water is actually going to run down, and it's going to get filtered through our gravel layer and just end up in our uh, aquatic chamber. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, things will stay pretty moist and um, well watered because this aquatic chamber can actually seep all the way up and provide moisture to the soil up here as well. Yeah, well. so that's one way um, we can make sure that our ecosystem is thriving. Now, Kat, can you go through some other ideas on how we can make sure we're loving our ecosystems on Earth? Yes, so Earth is a fragile ecosystem and it's our only one. So we have to make sure that we take very good care of it. So some examples of things that you can do to help support our earth is like we've talked about today, you can recycle, you can start composting like we have in our decomposition layer. You could try and limit your use of single use plastics. So that's things like uh, plastic straws, grocery bags. Um, you could try and walk or bike or carpool to places. Uh, you can also maybe try having a garbage cleanup day with your friends and family in your neighborhood. These are all small but different things that you can do to help um, make an impact in taking care of our one and only lovely planet Earth. Cool. All right. All right. Let's take a look at these final finished eco columns. Hallelujah. It looks so good. Looks really good. I'm excited to see what it looks like in a week or two. I think this layer here, it might be a little less cloudy. It'll be more filtered and clear. Yeah, that's a great hypothesis. Could mm -hmm. be. Or maybe it's going to get a lot greener. There's probably some algae in here already. If you look, it's kind of green. So with more sunlight, this algae can grow because it is a producer. Um, so we might have some more algae in here as well. Wow. Cool. Mm -hmm. Quite exceptional. And just a reminder, folks, if you'd like to reach out to us and text into the show at 306-570-1013, that number on the bottom of your screen, and reach out to us on our social media pages at Eyes Youth on all platforms and using, using the hashtag Couch Potato Lab. Uh, text us in your questions. We will have our Ask a Scientist segment coming up very soon. Yeah. Now, Kavina, I understand that you have a wonderful understanding of how all parts of these uh, eco columns work together. <laughs> yeah. So this eco column here has a number of different producers in it. We have our grass up here or our plants and they use sunlight to grow. And we also have some algae down here, which is also a producer in our ecosystem that uses sunlight to grow. Now, both of these things they also need other nutrients like um, uh, calcium, magnesium. Um, the aquatic life might need some carbon, and that is what our decomposition layer is for, is to provide those essential nutrients. Okay, so you can see that all of these are working together in order to grow. What we're not seeing in this mini ecosystem, e ecosystem is a lot of consumers, so things that are eating the producers. And, uh, but if you think of ecosystem, ecosystems as a larger scale, um, larger ecosystems have a lot more consumers in them. So think about a uh, desert or the grasslands or in an ocean, there's a lot more consumers. Mm. Catching on, catching yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So I to get help um, visualize what these larger, larger ecosystems look like, I came up with a little game. Ooh, I like cup games. stacking. Yeah. Cup stacking is a real sport. Um, so I'm going to show how there's different trophic levels in an ecosystem. Now a trophic level is basically one component in a food web. All right? Okay. Catching on? Yeah. Cool. I'm following it so far. So um, the first part of our ecosystem is of course the producers. Right here I have some algae. This is our base. So this is one trophic level. Now the algae grows and is able to support life 
of another organism, a consumer. And in this case, it is zooplankton, which are little tiny microscopic organisms in the water. Zooplankton eat algae. And as you can see, this layer is smaller than the algae layer because you need a lot more algae to support the zooplankton. Okay? And then our third trophic level is our herring, our fish. The fish eat the zooplankton. So as you can see, this layer is also smaller because every layer, you lose a little bit of energy. So when the zooplankton eats the algae, they can't eat all of the algae in the ocean and they can't get all of the energy from the algae. So the layers, layers get smaller. Um, oh, sorry, I made this layer a little too small. There we go. One more herring. All right, so our herring eat our zooplankton. Our zooplankton eats the algae. Our Atlantic puffins eat the herring. That is our other trophic level. There we go. And our final one, we have um, a predatory bird, the squaw. Now I forgot how to pronounce it. The squaw? Hmm. Okay. We have a predatory bird that eats the Atlantic puffin. So as wow. you can see, there's lots of layers. There's different trophic levels. And in, in an ecosystem, they all interact with one another. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looks like a pyramid. It is like yeah. a pyramid. A food pyramid, kind of, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is our food chain or our trophic levels in an ecosystem. Kat? Yeah? I challenge you <gasps> to do the same with um, a, a grassland ecosystem now. Okay, so I'm going to set up these cups and try and figure out what belongs at the bottom of our ecosystem and yep. what would consume that next part. That's your challenge for me? I'm challenging you to do that. Okay, well, I see a fox first, and I don't think a fox belongs at the bottom. No, um, I think you got to think producers. Yeah, I also see some eagles. Um, eagles are definitely not um, at the bottom. I know eagles like to, they're definitely consumers. Yes, they are consumers. Based off what Kavina described earlier about producers, consumers, and decomposers, they are definitely consumers. And now we have some scary snakes. Uh, I would say that scary snakes. <laughs> these scary snakes are definitely consumers as well. Oh, then we have, oh, okay, I know, I know snakes like to eat mice. I think we're getting somewhere. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so they might be closer to the bottom. And then I have... My last cups are of grass. Okay, so I, I'm thinking that grass is definitely going to be a producer. Yeah. Um. So let's get these out of the way. That will be the the base the of the ecosystem. The here we go. The okay. first trophic level. Now a good hint here too is how many there are. So if there's like a lot of grass, that's a good hint that it's most likely a producer because as Kavina was saying before, it's a pyramid. So as you get farther up, there's less of them in that ecosystem. So uh, if Kat's struggling, she can count the number of cups that there are and kind of get an idea of where they might go. Yes, mm -hmm. and with that um, analysis from Mackenzie, I know that now I have four mice cups and I'm pretty sure that mice eat grass. So I know that's going to be my next layer. Yeah. So you, you can think of this. Every level, you lose about 10% of the energy. So you need 1,000 pounds of grass to feed 100 pounds of mice. Wow. Even that way. Okay. That's a lot of grass. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I think my next layer, I'm pretty sure that snakes like to eat mice. And I only have s three snake cups. So I'm going to go with that. And then above that, I know that these two eagles are definitely going to prey on some snakes. You All got right. it. Nice. I All right. An eagle. And that means that our top predator in this uh, triangle here is the fox. The fox. Wow. We've got oh. a full ecosystem there. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of like a challenge. What happens if you take out a mouse? Any mouse, just take out like, a mouse. Just take it out. Yeah, like maybe there's less in the ecosystem. Maybe something happened. Maybe there was like a disease or maybe th they couldn't find enough grass to eat. So I just want to see what happens if we take out a mouse. So you want me to take one of my precious mice out of my ecosystem? 
Yep, you heard me right. That is okay. exactly what I want you to <laughs> Kat, do. Cat, let's see you do it. All right, I'm going to take this one out. Ready? Okay. Three, oh, no. two, two, one. one. No! No! What oh. just happened? My, oh. my ecosystem collapsed. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So why why did it collapse? I mean, it was just one mouse. Why did it collapse? It was just one mouse, but in an ecosystem, everything relies on each other. You need a certain amount of your primary consumers to support the life of the other consumers. Or you need a certain amount of algae to support the amount of zooplankton. So you need, everything needs to be in balance. And that's why it takes years and years and years for ecosystems to adapt and be perfected kind of like that recipe at the beginning of the show. Yeah, that's right. So if something <laughs> changes at the top, slowly they're going to change to the bottom too. And the same way at the bottom, if something changes at the bottom, they're going to change all the way up and they all kind of work together and they interact in um, an eco ecosystem and a community. So they all do affect each other and they all work together. Mm -hmm. So you can see if I removed some algae at the bottom, I'm going to do this carefully. So if there's less algae in the ecosystem, then I'm going to have to remove some zooplankton to support this ecosystem, which means I'll have to remove some herring, uh, which means I'll have to remove the Atlantic puffin, uh, which means I will have to remove the squa from the system as well. So look at that. In some ecosystems, if we don't have enough algae, we might not even be able to support the top predator. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. So uh, is that where we hear about animals maybe becoming endangered or going into extin ex extinction? Yeah, of course. Um, sometimes, uh, a lot of times, endangered species and threatened species, that happens because of um, predators. So if there's too many predators, so too many at the top, then the bottom falls apart and becomes endangered. So it's really important that there is an equal balance um, so that everything stays in check and how it needs to be. Yeah, so just remember that when you're um, interacting with your environment or you're interacting with animals or insects or grass, remember that all of it is relying on one another. So take care of it. Now, um, before we move on to the next thing, can I show you my skills? Yes. My cup stacking skills? Please Ready? do. Whoa. Wow. That it's was a so sport. fast. Blink. I was on a cup stacking team once. Wow. That <laughs> is crazy. Blink and you miss it, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it is time for our segment, Ask Our Scientist. Woohoo. Woo Let's do it. This is my favorite part. All right. So our first question is, from the Hayes Brothers, we're wondering where we're filming the Couch Potato Lab. Ah, uh, yes. So we're actually in studio at Graffiti TV. Uh, it's a really great studio with all this equipment and a bunch of uh, filming crew. So we're here in Regina at Graffiti TV, and that's how we bring the live stream to your home. Awesome. And our next question is, is it best to keep our eco column inside or outside our, of our house? Kavina, do you know? Question. Yeah, I do know. So our ecosystem requires um, the living thing, a producer, to keep growing. And a producer needs sunlight, and it needs CO2. And it needs some warmth, which are all abiotic factors, right? Remember that? Right. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. So as long as there's your producers are getting all of those things, it doesn't really matter where they're living. But if you're living in a very cold place, or maybe it's winter when you're watching this, maybe don't put it outside. But as long as it's getting room temperature, um, room temperature air, it's getting CO2 and sunlight, you're good to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't put it down in my dark basement. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. Do not do I'll that. make sure I put it in a nice sunlit place. All right. Next, uh, we have someone wondering, is there ice camps this summer? Yes. Oh, the yeah. answer is yes. So they do look a little bit different. They're not at the university, but we're actually trying something brand new and we're so excited. They're virtual camps. So they start on June 29th and they go till August 
14th. So you sign up for a week of camp, and then in the morning or afternoon, depending on which one you decide to sign up for, you get to come and hang out with um, scientists like me, Kev, and Kat oh for yeah. the morning on Zoom, and we get to talk to you. You can ask us questions right there, and you get the answer right there. We get to see each other. We get to do fun activities, mm -hmm. and you'll actually be shipped a box of materials. So it has all of the materials that you need to create these activities. So we do the prep work for you. We'll go through and do the activity with you. And we're going to learn so much and have so much fun. We cannot wait. It's yes. going to be good. It's going to be a great summer. All right. Our next question. I heard contaminants can travel through trophic levels too. Is that true? Ooh, it Davina? is true. Yeah, unfortunately it is. Now I'm going to put this pyramid back up if that's okay. Yes. To show you how it works. We got our LJ. Ah, that's a zoo plankton. That's a herring. There we go. Zoo plankton. Trust me, I was on a cup stacking team. <laughs> <laughs> and our herring. Let's just go with a small pyramid, okay? We got so, it. Um, there are contaminants that can travel through this trophic, these trophic levels, and that is called bioaccumulation. So what happens is you can have a little bit of contamination in each one of those algaes. But the problem is the zooplankton eats quite a bit of algae. So if they're eating two algaes, they're going to get twice the amount of contamination. Oh. And now if a herring eats two zooplankton, they're going to get two times the amount of contamination in each of these zooplankton. So every time um, a trophic level eats the other trophic level, the accumulation gets multiplied. Wow. Yeah. So sense? that's not good. That's not good, unfortunately. Wow. That's okay. why we need to make sure that we're limiting to the use of pesticides and fertilizers and those kind of kinds of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like to think if we th look at our mini ecosystem here, if we were thinking of a contaminant, um, Kavina mentioned that we should we watered it from the top and it traveled all the way down to the bottom. So the same would happen if we had a contaminant. So say we had contaminated water. If we poured it in the top, it's not only going to affect our terrestrial chamber, it's actually going to affect all of them. So it is true when there's a contaminant involved, it affects the whole entire ecosystem most times. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now our next question is, what jobs could you do if you study ecology? You could do so many different jobs. Kenz, do you want to name a few and then I'll name some? Hmm, there's like a zoologist. So they're going to work yeah. with different zoo animals, see how they interact. Maybe you're going to need to make sure you have the right environment for them at the zoo. Um, you could maybe work with like marine life. You might want to make sure that you have a balanced um, ecosystem within the water. Mm -hmm. you could what else? You could be a scientist that designs the newest and greatest natural fertilizers to help mm -hmm. these primary producers grow without destroying um, the other things in the ecosystem. You could work. You could work in law. You could be um, someone that writes new laws that help protect our earth. There's many, many, many jobs with ecology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and our next question. We have some questions about camp here. So, is there a code makers camp? Uh, is there an all girls camp? Uh, is there a juniors camp? Yes. Mackenzie? So, a um, couple different answers here. So, there is a regularized camp. There is a code makers camp. So, we're going to focus on coding. And we're actually going to be using a lot of micro bits, which is very exciting. And there is also an all girls camp. So, that'll be a chance for you to uh, meet some other female scientists, work with some of the female scientists on our eyes team. Unfortunately, there is no juniors camp this year, um, but we're working on something to make sure we can engage everyone. Now, these camps are going to run in the morning or the afternoon. So you're going to have two hours with your instructor in the morning or in the afternoon. So you get to pick when you register if you want to register for the morning session or the afternoon session, and you're going to spend two hours with the instructor. But we're also going to give you um, other activities that you can do throughout the day when you're not there in front of um, the Zoom call with the instructor. So you'll have lots to do that week. It's going to be a fun, busy week, and we hope to see you all there. Mm -hmm. Yes, CAP is going to be very exciting. Now, I understand that Kavina is very excited about some fun facts that she would love to share with us. Kavina? Yes. I'm a big fan of ecology, and I was super pumped about this episode, so I've done some research, and I have two really cool facts I want to share with everyone. Let's hear First em. one, did you know the Arctic, a very cold place, is actually a desert? What? It is. What? The Arctic is a desert because it has very little rainfall, similar to a desert. 
So it's similar to like a hot desert, right? And just remember, <laughs> rainfall, the amount of um, rain over the course of the year is an abiotic factor. Wow. wow. And my second fun fact is the biggest ecosystem in the world is the oceans. <gasps> Huh. Wow. Yeah. Those are two fun facts I did They're not fun. know. So no. thanks for teaching us that, Kavina. You're welcome. Yeah. If you want to know more fun facts, stick around for pre more episodes or mm -hmm. uh, join our science camp coming soon because yeah. we'll be sharing lots of fun facts there as well. Yes. And just a reminder, reminder, folks, that today is your last day to enter this week's giveaway. And the question is, in episode eight, what is the name of our in-studio elephant? <laughs> dun, dun, so dun. if you would like to text in your answer to 306-570-1013 or reach out to us on social media with your answer. So tomorrow uh, at the end of the episode, they will be announcing the winner of the giveaway who will receive <gasps> this super awesome epic potato clock amongst some other super awesome eyes swag so make sure you text in and get your answers in so that you have a chance to win all the super cool stuff yeah. uh now uh if you'd like to join us for tomorrow's episode you can check out uh that bit.ly backslash couch potato lab to get your lab manual and get your materials ready uh, and we would like to thank you for joining us here today at the Couch Potato Lab. Oh, yeah. And we hope to see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Take Bye. Care, everyone. <laughs>